joining us on the line from MU Health, Dr. Brian Todebush. So we are we are coming up on the beginning of fall sports, particularly for high schools and middle schools. What is the what is maybe the number one thing to look for with young athletes as they start their training to begin the season? Well, we're in full swing now, uh, you know, especially in the Mid Missouri region. Um, high school sports started up this week, and one of the um, things we're most concerned about when we start fall camps and get into seasons is really the the athletes' conditioning, um, especially in a year like this where we've had um, a lot of kids that have probably not been as active as what they have been before. So we still we caught a little break here lately, but usually in August we have pretty hot and muggy weather. So we have to keep an eye out on their overall conditioning, watch for any signs of heat illness, uh, muscle cramping, um, and so those would be the first things that we always want to keep an eye on. But then as the season goes along and the the athlete builds up some conditioning, then we start to see more of our traditional type of injuries, um, whether that be ankle, knee, hip, shoulders, those kind of injuries. Piggybacking off of your comments right there and the fact that these athletes aren't going to be as active as they have been in usual months, do you think that or are you worrying that there might be a spike in injuries this year? You know, it's it's definitely um, something that we're um, keeping an eye out for. Um, uh, I think once we get into the season, uh, we probably won't see as, as many injuries, but over the first couple of weeks here, uh, I think we have just over this week, we've seen um, several local kids that have come in with um, some pretty minor injuries, but they are probably things that they're just maybe doing a little bit more now than what they've been doing over the past three months. And um, so it's definitely something where uh, you're going to have to ease into their, their training and not go maybe as full speed as that's what we've done in the past with our with our young kids. One of the questions that I would have for for younger athletes is on the running side of things, especially e- even maybe non athletes, as you do you know your physical education, those kinds of things. One, what are some things to look for as as far as possible injuries when it comes to outdoor running with younger with younger people? Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly, um, you know, outdoor running is going to carry a little bit more uh, risk than indoor running just because of the the surface that um, kids or even adults might be running on. And so um, when we're looking at running injuries, it's usually we we can kind of break it down into uh, two possible scenarios, Uh, one of those being is it an, an acute injury just from misstepping and that's something that we might see more with outdoor running where we're running on an uneven surface and there's a possibility they step into a pothole or do they um, step off a curb when they're not looking and we don't see those type of things with indoor running as much um, and those would be the the type of injuries where we ha- might see a, a, a sprain or a muscle strain um, and so one of the questions we always get is what's what's the difference between a, a muscle strain and a muscle sprain and it, uh, I'm sorry a sprain and a strain and it usually has to do with the, the type of tissue that's involved with that so um, a, a strain is actually more of a muscular injury and so an uh, example of that would be like a calf tear and we can see those with running or a groin pull which is another common muscle injury that we'll see with running whereas a sprain is is a ligament injury so that has to do with the stability of a joint and when we're running what we usually see is or ankle sprains would be the most common example of that type of injury i guess probably a two-part question here going into fall sports what are some of the most common injuries that you see happen across the board and also what are a lot of measures you can do to prevent those from happening as the season goes on Mm -hmm. Um, Some of it really depends on the sport that you're talking about. Um, So definitely in the the fall, we do see a lot more running just because the weather starts to cool. Um, On the high school level, we have cross country. And then on the adult level, we're seeing more organized races, although, again, this year is probably a little less than usual. So um, when we're talking about just running, if it's not an acute injury, then we're probably looking at more overuse injuries for those type of athletes. And those would be injuries such as uh, tendonitis or plantar fasciitis, 
Um, we can also see joint pain, uh, which could be an early sign of some wear and tear in the joint, such as early arthritis, um, or even bone pain, which is a common, um, you know, it's a common injury we'll see in running, and it has a lot to do with overuse or poor nutrition. And so the way that we can tell is basically where the, where the pain is for those athletes. Um, if you're looking at some of the other fall sports that we see out there, um, definitely concussions. We're going to have an uptick in that, which uh, because of the football and soccer that picks up in the fall. And so obviously those are going to be more neurologic type symptoms. Um, but other injuries that we might see with those sports like football and soccer would probably be lower extremity or shoulder when you're talking about football and specifically, again, a lot of sprains and strains um, for those injuries. It is the closers on KFRU, KLIK. We are being joined by Dr. Brian Todabush of MU Health. Uh, he he focuses a lot on your your athletic injuries, a lot of sports medicine, and you you brought up a really great point there. You were talking about maybe people who are a little bit older as we get into the fall, not just the younger athletes, but for someone I don't know, let's say who is maybe not taking care of himself and maybe needs to figure out how to get into better shape. What are some things that somebody in their late 30s, uh, I'm not naming anybody in particular, I wouldn't do that, of course, but why would it, somebody in their late 30s who's trying to get into better shape, what are some of the things they should look at as they venture into taking better care of themselves? Well, sometimes I might even look in the mirror myself and, and kind of think, or what, are the, what are the steps that I might take? Because that might describe some of the people I know or even somebody talking now, but um, you know, first of all, if really if, if you if you've been more sedentary and not as active, um, and as we get older, we start to see more uh, risk factors. So, you know, the first step is just touching base with a health professional, um, and you know, that could be your primary care doctor or a sports medicine specialist, or it might be uh, somebody else that you rely on for some uh, health advice, like a therapist or. Um, you know, other health professionals that are out there. Uh, and so the first thing is just get a checkup or a clean bill of health. If you've had, been having any symptoms such as occasional shortness of breath or chest pains, those would be concerning signs that might need to be looked into a little bit. And then, you know, as far as when you actually want to set goals for yourself, um, realistic goals too. And part of the key of, of, of developing an exercise program, we always talk about uh, – a FIT principle, which stands for frequency, intensity, time, and type. And so, uh, you know, the key to start with is, is to begin exercising at a low to moderate level and trying to set a goal on a, a, a frequency, so how many days a week you do that. And ideally, you know, you'd want to try to do something at least every other day to begin with and not every day because you're probably going to experience more soreness, especially muscular soreness when you start. And uh, you shouldn't be at an intensity where you put yourself to being short of breath. That's a sign that you're working too hard. You should be able to carry on a conversation when you're doing your exercise. And then the last uh, time-wise, we usually start in intervals, so something about a 10 to 15-minute time frame to start with, and then gradually increase that about uh, maybe 10% a week or 5 to 10 minutes a week. Uh, lastly, would be the type, and you know they're obviously running gets a lot of attention, but there's lots of types of exercise, and anything that you have to put a little more effort into, like cycling, going to the gym, um, it could be something like tennis or even pickleball is very popular these days. Those are all forms of exercise where you can get a lot of good uh, health benefits from that. I've got one. I've got one more question, and this is just a, a personal question. If mm-hmm. I am having, if I'm having pain or popping in my fingers, is it telling me that I'm spending too much time on my phone, or is there something else going on? Well, that's that's hard to say. Um, <laughs> you know, nowadays everything's uh, handless too. Um, we can we can type and text without even touching our phones, but um, it's a good clue, maybe. You know, if you're starting to see some swelling or pain in your joints, um, then it might be some overuse setting in and maybe need to talk to somebody, possibly get an x-ray to look and see how your joints look. Dr. Brian Todebush joining me and, and scolding me for being on my phone too much. <laughs> apparently, I, apparently I set myself up for that one. Thank you so much for your time. A lot going on for young athletes. 
Uh, we are back into fall sports. So thank you so much for joining us. We will talk to you down the line. Sounds good. I just uh, I want to put a quick plug in for all the athletes out there at, here at MU Health. Uh, we're starting a uh, walk-in injury clinic uh, beginning next week, and that's going to be uh, from 7 to 8 a.m. every Monday through Friday. And so the point of that clinic is when you have those acute injuries, especially sports injuries, um, we take you in the morning from 7 to 8 without an appointment, and that's going to be at MOI here uh, at the MU Health Campus. Outstanding, yeah. For so for any athletes, walk in. You said a walk in clinic, uh, seven to eight a.m. Monday through Friday at MOI. That's correct. All righty. Well, Doctor Brian Totobush, thank you once again for for making sure we're taking care of ourselves just a little bit better. Anytime, pleasure to join you guys. You guys stay safe and have a good night. We will. Thank you so much to Brian, Doctor Brian Totobush, for joining us here on the closers.